we go. This is a responsive reading. So if somebody would like to um, unmute and be my responder, and then if everyone at home would, uh, even with your mics muted, the response is simply, God still calls us to come. Charity. Okay. Yes, Jim. How, how do you mute? Or do you uh, mute us? Good job. Well, let's see. There, I just need you, Jim. You're good. I'll, I'll do the response. Excellent. Thank you. We are living in changing times. God still calls us to come. We have been brought together in a new and different way. God still calls us to come. We are worried and concerned about many things. God still calls us to come. We grieve all that we have lost. God still calls us to come. Let us hear the voices from those who have gone before us. And remember, God still calls us to come. Well, hang on. There we go. <clears throat> Could I have another person who would be a responder for the psalm? And the response is, is in italics. I do it. I'll read it. Uh, go, ahead, <laughs> go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> okay. All right. Protect me, God, because I trust in you. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Every good thing I have comes from you. There are godly people in the world. I enjoy them. But those who turn to idols have much pain. I will not offer blood to those idols. I won't even speak their name. No, the Lord is all I need. He takes care of me. My share in life has been pleasant. My part has been beautiful. I praise the Lord because he guides me. Even at night, I feel his bleeding. I keep the Lord before me always. Because he is close by my side, I will not be hurt. So I rejoice and I am glad. Even my body has hope. This is because you will not leave me in the grave. You will not let your Holy One rot. You will teach me God's way to live. Being with you will fill me with joy. At your right hand, I will find pleasure forever. Amen. Here's our prayer. God, you accompany us through life and even into death. You provide every good thing we enjoy. We can rejoice in every gift you offer. Thank you for the sun shining, the grass growing, the flowers blooming, the birds singing, and every sign of new life springing up. You care so well for us in life. Help us to trust you with the life to come. We will receive this life with joy. We will live in your presence today, tomorrow, and through eternity. Come and help us find peace in your presence. Amen. Sing with me at home, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. 
praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, that day when freed from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face. Clothed in the gleaming linen, how I'll sing thy wondrous grace. Come, my Lord, no longer tarry, take my ransom soul away. Send thy angels now to carry me to realms of endless day. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let that goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's our gospel reading. When it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews really the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I'm going to read this gospel in three sections and pause and just talk about the things that are happening in the scriptures. Jesus' disciples were all locked up because Jesus had been crucified. And even after he was risen from the dead, they were still afraid. They were still afraid because they had been part of this movement and now their leader had been killed. That put them at risk personally. We know that from other gospel accounts where we see Peter going and following Jesus to the place where he was put on trial. And when he was asked whether he was a follower of Jesus, he denied it. He denied it three times because. He was at personal risk because if they were rounding up, um, not just Jesus, but if they were going to round up his followers as well, uh, they were in great danger to be identified as followers of Jesus. So they had closed up the doors. They had locked them. They had shuttered the windows. They were alone because they were afraid that someone was going to find out that they were there and someone was going to come and someone was going to, to break in and take them away. I don't know that we can understand the kind of fear that they were feeling on that day. And I think that as Jesus comes and stands among them and he says to them twice, peace be with you. Peace be with you. He shows them that he's there. He shows them that he has not abandoned them. He shows them that he has suffered and he has risen from the dead. And then he gives them this commission. 
He breathes on them. John is the only one who tells us this part of the story. He breathes on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And he gives them a very important job. He says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, I know that this is just in this one spot, and so that makes it really difficult to know um, the greater context in which he said this. We don't have any other details from other witnesses. But here John tells us that the first job Jesus gives them after his resurrection is the job of forgiveness. And I think that that is vital, that we take time to pause this morning and recognize that as Jesus gave his disciples this job of forgiving sins, this huge responsibility, he says to them, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. I don't know if you remember that at the beginning of the gospel stories, Jesus would also, he would often say to the person brought to him for healing, your sins are forgiven you. And this was a great challenge to him uh, by the religious leaders who were, who were gathering around. They would say, who can forgive sins except for God alone? Jesus then would do miracles to show that he had the power to forgive sins. Here, Jesus, as he has been resurrected, John thinks it's very important that we know that he came to his disciples and he gave them the same power that he had, the power to forgive. I think we underestimate just how important and just how impactful this statement was. It was something that John remembered decades later. John's gospel was written last. It's the last gospel witness that we have. And John, he tells the story a little different than the synoptics. And I wonder sometimes if John hadn't seen those gospel accounts come out and he decided that they needed more flesh. They needed more details. They needed to emphasize different aspects of the story. So here John tells us, Jesus commissioned us to forgive sins. He gave us the Holy Spirit and said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Why would Jesus do that? It's a, it's a question to ponder. Why would Jesus give them that authority? And the second question to, to ponder with that is, why then are we so reticent to forgive? Why do we hesitate? Why not forgive the sins of any and all who come and say, I repent? Moving on to this next section. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12 was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. You all know, and we've, we've talked about this section of scripture before, that I think Thomas gets, he just gets it, The the short end of the stick here. (laughs) No one believed unless they saw Jesus. No one believed. And here the disciples are a week later, a week after this first encounter with Jesus, and the doors are still shut. The doors are still shut. They're still locked up tight. 
They're still cowering in fear. And here Jesus comes in and stands among them, and he answers Thomas's unprayed prayer. Thomas didn't pray and say, God, give me a sign. Thomas complained to his fellow disciples and said, I can't believe. I can't believe unless I see the marks, unless I touch them, unless I see him, I cannot believe. And here is Jesus standing in their midst, answering this prayer that Thomas hadn't even prayed. Saying, Thomas, come, see me. Thomas, come, touch me. Thomas, see that I am here and I am real and I am resurrected. And Thomas responds in faith. I think sometimes we don't let God know when we have doubt. We hide it, right? We put a mask on. We put on that, that pretty mask that says, oh, I trust God. I believe that everything's going to be fine. But God doesn't, he's not offended by our doubts or our questions. God is not offended when we say, I need something more. God is not offended. My favorite psalm, one of my favorite psalms having to do with this says, God knows that we are grass. God knows that we are dust. God's expectations for us are not higher than what we can attain to. God does not expect us to have perfect faith that never asks a question. God does not expect us to have perfect faith that never has a doubt. Thomas had these doubts and he was honest and said, here's what it will take for me to believe. And Jesus answered his prayer even though he didn't pray it. <laughs> he answered that request for more. I need more. And here's Jesus saying, have all of the more you need. Have all of the evidence you need. Come and see, come and touch. Because Jesus' desire for his disciples and his desire for us today is this thing that he says three times in this passage. Peace be with you. God wants us to be whole and complete, lacking in no good thing. God wants our faith to grow and to, sh to be shaped by the evidence that we see. Not a mindless faith, but a faith that receives, a faith that is willing to grow. So here is Thomas, and he says, my Lord and my God. And Again, John puts this in here. This is the only time we have this story. So whenever something's in a gospel just once, I always think we need, to, we need to really focus in and pay attention. John is writing this, remember, decades later. And he says, you have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and still have come to believe. John's audience receiving this gospel would have been almost entirely made up of people who were way too young to have seen Jesus. And he gives them this blessing as a legacy of faith. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. That's you and me. John is offering us a blessing. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And then John gives us these, this little two-verse snippet. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. John's purpose for putting together these stories is to increase the faith of those who would read them. So that you and I would be able to see the things that God has done, the things that Jesus did while he was here on earth, the things that they experienced as his followers, so that you and I could believe that Jesus is the Messiah. I think God is still at work right now in our lives, in our world, 
to give us signs, to give us testimony and witness of his presence so that you and I would have an increasing and growing faith, a faith that continues to develop not just a one and done faith, but a faith that continues to grow over time. So here's your thoughts to ponder. The disciples still didn't know what was happening. <laughs> they still had no clue what was going on. And yet Jesus comes and stands among them and says, peace be with you. So if today you feel like you don't know what's happening, <laughs> You don't know what's happening in the world around you. You don't understand all of the things that are going on. I want you to hear those words from Jesus. Peace be with you. Jesus gives them, and perhaps by extension us, enormous power to forgive. Let's take that responsibility on and choose to offer forgiveness any chance we get. Thomas the twin still gets the short end of the stick. Everyone's faith is imperfect. Everyone's faith has room to grow. Jesus answers Thomas's unprayer. And I think God still wants to answer our, our prayers and even our unprayers, our unprayed prayers. So, questions to take with us. How are we doing with our commission to forgive? How are we doing with that? Are we holding on to doubts that we've never spoken? What things can you point to that help you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? Would somebody read our scripture here from 1 Peter? It'll be on two slides. I can. Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is perishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. So the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, where you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Would someone like to pray our prayer? I guess I can. Okay. Our God who seeks to gather us under our under your wings of love, the one who shows up and shakes our world, show us who you are. We long for you to come remove our doubts. Help us to hear your calling. Help us to hear you calling us to follow you each day. Help us see you at work in our world. Help us to follow you in the work of forgiveness and mercy. Thank you that you have given us encouragement in the testimony of those who have gone before and by your spirit who dwells within us. Amen. Amen. 
All right, so you're gonna have to sing loud on this one, and if you wanna lean, you can lean, okay? So two verses, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Well, let's check in. How are we doing? I enjoyed the songs this week. <laughs> I managed to get some good work done this week. So that, that was a nice change. Mm hmm I'm looking forward to being back in my office for two weeks. Yeah, Rich is on a two week home, two week in the office rotation schedule for all the city employees there in Sydney. That's an interesting way to do it. I hadn't heard about that way. Well, that's in case uh, people start getting sick. We have uh, half the city employees that can take over. Do you work from home? I try. <laughs> <laughs> There's only I something you can do. Mm -hmm. I've told my employees, don't be hard on themselves. Just do what they can. They're all getting paychecks, whether they do hardly anything at all or work heavily, but I'm gonna run out of stuff to do as far as our work goes. It's, it's getting to the point of, you know, thinking about, oh, well, we could use some hot chocolate or we need a garden hose or, you know, stuff that we need that would be making things easier. And yet we're not supposed to be going outside. I mean, we're not right. supposed to be making trips that are not essential. And deciding where that line is, is challenging. I will be glad when my grandchildren can spend more time outside. It's getting the point where it's driving me crazy. <laughs> a little bit playing Legos and, you know, whatever. La, 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 la. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You know, go outside for more than just an hour at a time. It needs to warm up or dry out or something. So I, I, I look forward to that. Although Caroline and Ian both helped George lay tile yesterday, so <laughs> if you call they're, it help. They're learning skills. They well, are. And it's something that Ian really enjoys. I think it's the pattern things or something that he can line up. It's and great. he and George laid out a whole floor full of pattern. And George will actually do the what do you call it? Gluing down of it, but Ian was in there helping him line up all the little tile pieces. I'm ready to cook. Well, 
like Carol said, I cook already for a crowd. I'm ready to have a crowd here to help me eat what I cook. Yeah. I'm ready to entertain. I'm ready to have people over, ready to have a get together. I'm, I really miss that so much. So, yeah. Like a little meme on, so, on uh, Facebook today, my uh, buttons on my pants are social distancing, so. <laughs> 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 so I'm ready to cook and share. Well, I wish you could share with me because I hate cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you, Barb. My husband is cooking right now because I said I have to do the church thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually glad that I'm going three weeks, uh, uh, three days a week next week to start and be busy in that aspect. Uh, even though I'm grateful that um, I got a paycheck, I feel bad receiving it without working. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Does uh, your husband work? Yeah, he's been working all the time. Actually, he's actually working overtime because they have so much work. Uh-huh. So since he's outside, I mean, they take, they keep their distances and stuff like that at work, but they go in the same truck. I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're trying to be really careful. He wears his mask and everything, you know, the one Lisa had, I got one for him that I changed the filter and all that. <clears throat> so, but um, at least, yeah, he's working and, um, we're supposed to work, we don't supposed to work next week, but Amy wanted me because we have some stuff coming up. And then everybody's supposed to report uh, full time uh, on the 27th and they supposed to uh, open the courthouse on May 4th or 2nd, May 4th, I believe. <clears throat> and we're supposed to start like everything again, back at least by video and stuff like that video still not very many people in the courtrooms. I don't know, but I'm glad that I'm going three days next week. I'll be there Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, Thursday. I haven't seen you, Jenny. That, Jenny. That means I can see you next week then, huh, Sylvia? Yes, I haven't seen you all this week, but uh, hopefully I see you next week. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Well, we had a little bit of a scare this week. My brother got sick. Yes. Oh, yeah. and, uh, they tested him for flu and it came back negative. And in Tucson, they have, well, when he was sick, they had more than 700 cases. So it's hard oh. to, I don't know how many they have today, but, um, but they were, it, it was, it seemed like it would be pretty highly likely that he was sick with COVID-19 and they were waiting for his test. So that was a really pretty scary day and a half while we waited for that, but it was negative. So we're very, we're very thankful. And he was already starting to feel better yesterday. So that was good. He said he hadn't been sick like that for a long time. So whatever it was really hit him really hard. Um, he said he didn't want to watch television. He just wanted to stare at the wall. So, um, wow. and then his boys all had the stomach flu. So his wife was <clears throat> wow. <laughs> but we're thankful that it wasn't that it wasn't COVID nineteen and that he's already starting to feel better. Good. They had to have their all of their water pipes in their house had to be replaced because it was made of that. There's a there's a certain kind of um, plastic piping that was pretty popular in the eighties and and early nineties, and the, it works fine until it doesn't. <laughs> and then it all fails at once. Oh. So they had to have everything replumbed in their whole house. Wow. And so they're they're waiting for that to get finished up. They're yeah. thinking it would take a little bit over a week. It's been a little longer than that. So we're hoping that that'll get resolved soon. But every house in their neighborhood has to have it, has to have all their pipes replaced. Everybody's facing the same thing. So that would be PVC pipe. Pretty popular in Arizona. Yep. Yep. It's a, it was a, a pretty, uh, 
widely used product and now it's going to be a widely replaced product. Hmm. Yeah. Is he working? My brother is a pastor. He's the pastor at the um oh. the Tucson Friends Church. It's called I think Northwest North West Community Friends Church or Northeast Community Friends Church. <clears throat> like that. It has a north in it. But it's there in Tucson. So he's been he's they've been doing recorded worship sets in their sanctuary. So mm -hmm. I think once he starts feeling better, I'm gonna give him a sister lecture about how when if somebody's sick that singing expels lots of micro droplets and that probably is not a good idea. So they've just had like four or five people in the in their sanctuary, you know, recording worship, but still. Yeah. Well, with what we're learning about, you know, how it spreads and how quickly and easily it spreads, especially if you're forcefully exhaling. Mm. Then, um, yeah, that's probably not a good idea for them to do that. And then I think he does recorded messages too. I don't, I can't remember if he does part of his service live or not, but. <clears throat> I guess the the governor doesn't want gatherings still like a lot of people gathering for religious means or whatever and, and I guess some churches are ready to do it. Yeah. It's um it, so the reason behind that is that in the state of Kansas in the in the past few weeks we've had three major outbreaks at the beginning of all of this three major outbreaks that were related to church services mm -hmm. so, and again it's you know people are singing they're talking it just gives a lot of opportunity for the virus to spread so it's not it's not she named specifically the religious services but that's because this is the time when everyone's getting together for religious services yeah <laughs> even people who don't normally go you know we, we joke a little bit about Christmas and Easter Christians, but uh, that's usually when the churches are full. So, um, and right now it would be too tempting, I think, to have um, the opportunity to get out of the house and to gather together. <laughs> People who probably shouldn't, probably would be the ones who would be there. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I, I, I don't, uh, I don't disagree with her analysis of the situation. Things are. Things are starting to kind of peak, and we're I'm thankful for that. But what what happens is if if it levels off and then we all start meeting together again, it'll go right back up. That's what she said. So, I'm so really, I, I'm, I really, um, I I'm really agree with whatever she's been doing right now, and yeah. not only in that aspect, but in you know, con, you know, everything. The decision it's been hard for her. You know, she had a lot of opposition, but I think she has us, the people, you know, in her heart, um, to protect us. Right. And I think that's, this is a hard job right now. Who it would is. even want to be in office right now? That's a terrible job. Yeah. So if you, if you think about it or you see headlines, uh, pray for those people who are in office, who are making decisions. Yeah. Uh, I don't care what party they're from, all parties. <laughs> they've got a lot, they've got a tough job, you know, so they've got to listen to scientific studies and interpret all that data they've got to look at all the projections and um and know that 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 those projections are based on incomplete data set sets so uh mm -hmm. we're all still learning and figuring it out as we go right so it's it's just going to be tough and no matter what decision they make there's going to be somebody who's going to argue oh yeah <laughs> and for the most part i see a lot of uh, of the people what i see you know in my opinion you know going by the man's law, you know, um, they, they want to stick to the law, the, the rights and, 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 and statutes and stuff like that, what I have seen and I heard in the office, you know, but um, I don't know, you know. Yeah. Yeah, God, <clears throat> Jesus calls us to love our neighbor. And yeah. uh, right now it seems like loving our neighbor includes keeping our distance. So. Um, we can continue to love each other and support each other and pray for each other. Uh, 
I saw Caitlin yesterday and I gave her an illicit hug. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes we use our best judgment, right? So uh, there's going to be times when, you know, you might need to cook a meal for a neighbor, even if it feels a little risky, or you might need to run an errand for somebody, even if it means going out and putting yourself at risk. So um, let's take the risk on ourselves, though, and not put that on other people. So that's, that's what I think love does, right? Yeah. It I'm is even... wonderful to see your beautiful faces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still making masks. If anybody needs them, just say the word. I've got a stack of them. So that keeps me out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Those are helpful. Yeah, very helpful. Well, if you need a, another one or if you want a different color, just let me know. I got it. Do you have any manly? Because Mauricio doesn't like very much mine. My little stars or foxies or something like that, but he's wearing them. <laughs> I have more manly ones, yes. <laughs> okay, I get you some for you. Yeah. <laughs> he wears them, but you know, he said, that's all you have? I said, yeah, <laughs> I didn't get to choose. I mean, like. <laughs> yeah, I dug deeper. I have manly material. <laughs> okay, cool. I get you some for him. <laughs> Flame. Ooh. Oh, that would be cool. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Andy had a set of curtains made out of that. So I've been digging deep into my scrap pile. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, and I, I bet he would, would too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lisa, how's uh, Steve's new great baby? I don't know. <laughs> Nephew or niece? I can't remember. But. Ne um, yeah, uh, his brand new baby niece, great niece. She's um, probably going to be released from the hospital on Tuesday. The mom's going to be released tomorrow. So, but since she was preemie and, you know, was just barely over five pounds, they're going to keep her. So, yeah. but anyway, she's, she's a beautiful little thing. I, I get pictures every day. Carol just is a proud grandma and she's just itching to get her hands on that baby. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's prayers for the mama. She that was scary. That was a scary thing with that blood pressure. Did her blood pressure resolve then? Yes. Yes. Okay. And your trip back was okay, Charity. You had. Yeah, it was. Um, it's much easier to drive a Nissan Rogue. <laughs> than it is to drive a 15 foot U-Haul with it, the, the steering wheel literally had this much give in it. Oh, wow. So yeah. with, the, with the wind being what it was, that was not real fun. No. But uh, I, my elbows hurt for about three days after we got, after we got there. I think from the tension of just holding that, uh -huh. that steering wheel, so. Yeah, um, you feel pretty beat up, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really did. So, um, but if anybody needs a workout, here's what I'd recommend. Go get a 15-foot <laughs> truck, load it up, then drive around, and then unload it. So, it'll build all your muscles. You'll, you'll like, you know, you do squats, right, because you're lifting with your legs, and you get your, get your bicep workout and your core workout from all the, you know, stability of walking up and down the ramp. It's good stuff. It's good, it's good times. So, <laughs> but Rich now has at least enough that he doesn't feel like he's camping in our new house. And good. Um, it was good to see the floors done. You know, when you make those decisions, like, hey, put this product in my whole house. <laughs> it's you know not just like a room you know but like everywhere it, it it's a little risky feels a little risky especially when you see like one or two planks <laughs> yeah. um but it was it's gorgeous i'm really i'm really happy with it so i'm Yay. really on i think it will the flooring is going to last for a really long time it's commercial grade so it should be should hold up and be really durable and yeah, so we're happy with it. If anybody wants a two-minute house tour, I'll send you the link. 
let me know. <laughs> I sent it to uh, Lisa and Debbie yesterday. And um, so, yep, if you want to see sure. where, where we'll be. Go ahead, Charlotte, did you have something? Oh, I just like, I'd like that link. I'd like to look at your house. Yeah. You too, Jenny. You too, Jenny? Okay. Yeah, if I can get it on the, on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I think you should be able to. Mm -hmm. Charity, I wonder if you should uh, unmute Jim. Oh. Me mute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Jim, how you doing? I'm good. I was just listening to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> good, good call, Sylvia. Since you didn't know how to mute yourself, you probably didn't know how to unmute. So, oh, I was gonna ask you. Can we mute him back? Back. <laughs> All right. You know, um, I said mute him back, and I was thinking, Jim. This social distancing thing between you and me, I think we should carry it over for another six months. <laughs> wow. I that really enjoyed hurts, it. Dude. That really hurts. <laughs> Love you, Jim. Hi, me too. That's oh funny, All right. Well, how can we pray for each other? And we'll uh, pray and close and and see each other again in a week. How can we pray? I'm on some new uh, diabetes medicine and it's doing good things for me, but it's that adjustment time. Um, and uh, I'm definitely noticing that it's new stuff. And so I'm sleeping more and I'm, my guts are feeling weird again. And, it's all the usual, you know, this will pass when my body gets used to it, but yeah, I'm in the first 10 days of it. So just that. Okay. Yeah. That adjustment time. Exactly. Hmm. Well, I need to, uh, I like prayer just to get used to this place. I was staying in a very small place. There was still traffic and lights where we live now nobody turns on even their front porch light and so it's really dark at night and it's a very big place by myself so it's kind of weird because you're going to sleep <laughs> and you just hear every creak in the whole house if you know the water heater turns on and off because they're you know living there in the parsonage things never slow down there's no mm -hmm. traffic there's always trains there's always noise and now it's just Creepy silence and dark. <laughs> At least I have Angus next door who tells us if there's anything going on. He's a big Rottweiler. He's friendly, but it's just weird. So you, so you need us to record the trains and send you uh, train yeah. noises? <laughs> I might need that, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Can I but it's very ask, hard to sleep. Yeah, it sounds like it. Can I ask you guys to keep my mom just in your thoughts too? I, I think she's doing pretty well. And she told me this morning that she um, is rearranging the house in her head, which she's very good at. And so she's uh, she's been rearranging the rooms and figuring out what she's going to do with some stuff and some things she's going to redecorate. So I, I think she's I think she's doing well. You know, she's, she's starting to think ahead. And I know it's weird for her being here and not being able to be in her house. And so just thank you for keeping a good thought for us. Mm -hmm. Sure. Where is she at, Deb? She's at a walk right now, but she's here with us. Oh, yeah. So she's, she's rearranging your house? No, no, no. She's rearranging her house in her head. So she's, she's been here the entire time. She's never left after the wedding. That's what I thought. So, yeah, no, she's, she's just really good at rearranging furniture in her head. So she's moving the house around and thinking about what she's going to be doing. Oh. So how's your mom's dad doing, Tina? 
They're doing okay. I, I go get their groceries once a week so they don't have to go out and do that. <clears throat> I've got a list, Tina, if you need somebody else to go shopping for. <laughs> hey, not a problem. <laughs> Okay. Well, let's let's close in prayer and then we'll say goodbye until next week. Make sure you reach out, talk to somebody if you if you start to feel lonely or if you're feeling stir crazy, give somebody a call, send a text message. Um let's be let's be encouraging and supportive of one another in this time. I know it's uh, there are some aspects of this that are starting to feel like normal, like routine. And that, that in, a, uh, in and of itself can feel a little disquieting when something so different starts to feel like routine. So let's keep each other in prayer and keep each other connected and feeling supported and lifted up. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace. And we thank you that you have promised that we will never be alone, that you will never leave us or forsake us. We thank you for our, the ability to gather in community, even if it's over a video screen. God, we pray that you would continue to remind us to reach out to one another, to contact each other, to pray for each other. Lord, in this time of adjustments, we pray for Travis as he's adjusting to a new medication. We pray that that process would happen quickly and that this medication would be a benefit to his body and his health. God, we pray for Jan as she is adjusting to life without her husband. God, that's such a, a long and, and difficult time of adjustment. And Lord, we pray that she would feel um, permission to be sad when she's sad, to look forward to uh, the future as well. God, to, um, to walk through each day with your peace. We pray for that. Lord, we pray for uh, the planks. We pray that they would stay healthy. We thank you for you know, doing their grocery shopping for them. We pray that, that they would feel loved and supported. God, we pray for Carol's daughter-in-law and for the new grandbaby. We pray for health, healing, and good recovery time. We pray for Rich that you would help him to adjust to a new house and new surroundings and a new noise level. We pray that he would be able to sleep at night and to feel comfortable and at home. God, we pray for Sylvia this week as she goes back to work, for Jim as he's going to work on the ESU campus. God, for each person who is working from home or working in their offices, Lord, we pray that we would know that our hard work and faithfulness is enough, even if we don't complete the list of things that we have made for ourselves to do. Help us to trust that what we do is enough. Help us to trust that you can fill in the gaps. God, we thank you for the sunshine. We pray that would continue. We ask that you would bless the Rains Bargers and um, the kids and help them to know that that uh, they are loved and encouraged and supported as well. We thank you for the, the progress on home projects that they've made this week. Lord, for each one of us, help us to trust in you, to present you with our, our questions and our doubts and our struggles, to trust that, that you care about us and that you desire to fulfill our needs and provide for us. Help us to be faithful in this time to love each other, to love our neighbors. And Lord, give us uh, the ability to grow in our faith, in our patience, and in our strength in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, everybody. All right, Bye. 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 See you all, you guys. Have a blessed week, everybody. Family, you have a blessed week. We love you.